Welcome back y'all. So we're gonna be doing some catfishing today for some eater size catfish. We're down here on the Kentucky River just a few miles from our house. Uh, it's the middle of July, a lot of the big fish are spawning right now. So figured it'd be a good time to come down here and try to catch a few eaters to take home and fry up. So we're gonna get the boat in the water and I'll explain to you guys a little bit more about what we're gonna be doing today. And so our contacts are stuck in our starter here. It's just clicking. Motor shot. What did we use last time? Oh yeah. That's a nice look. Something was down in that hitch. Golly. Quick, I wasn't expecting that. Dang, it was in gear and everything. I'm about to shot my leg off. Uh... So we got some pretty good current today. It looks like probably about one, one and a half mile an hour, which is a good thing. And we're set up on the inside of this river bend here. And anytime you can fish the inside of a bend, there's gonna be a little bit less current, which normally makes it a pretty good spot to fish. We're just tied up to some roots here. And right behind us is a ton of big logs, sunken trees. Uh, there could be a big flathead laying back in here too. I've actually caught some pretty nice flatheads in this spot in the past. For bait today, we're running a little bit short on bait. We've only got one bait fish with us, and that is a fresh moon eye. Well, we caught it last night, so it's still kind of fresh. Hopefully, we're able to catch a few more of these this afternoon, have some more fresh bait. Moon eye is actually a really mushy fish, even when you first catch it. But after they set for a night on, on ice, they get really mushy. It's just part of using moon eye for bait. They're going to be mushy. So we're going to use our medium action tangling with catfish rods tonight. Uh, they're still a little bit heavy action for me when I'm fishing for channel cats. But, like I said, there's a chance we could hook into a big fish, and I want to have the power to pull him out of these logs, so I went ahead and brought these. But they're still, a, they still got a really soft tip that loads up good on channel cats. If anybody's interested in any of these rods, check the description. I'll always keep a link down there on where you can get them at. Hopefully the gar are gonna leave us alone. That's one bad thing about this river. It is loaded with long nose gar. So hopefully they don't shred our baits because you can go through some bait really quick when they get in the area. <laughs> We're never gonna get all these rods out. What was that noise you made? <laughs> I mean, it's probably buried it in the wind and the way it sounded. Oh no, it's bent bad right there to the tip. It's no good. Oh, there's a gar on that one now. No, wait a minute, that might actually be. No, it's a little channel, perfect little channel. All right, so that's a male channel cat, and it is absolutely covered in parasites. That's the size fish we're looking for, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw it back because although as long as you cook it good, you know, you shouldn't have a problem with the parasites, but I still just, I don't know, they just can't seem kind of nasty to me, so. I might regret it, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one back and hope we catch a couple more that are a little cleaner. Oh, he wanted back in the boat. So our rigs for the most part are three-way rigs. Uh, just a three-way swivel with a dropper going to my sinker and then another line coming off for my bait. And uh, when you got current like this, it's just hard to beat a three-way rig. It just lets that bait move around really natural. I 
don't know what we got. But it's been on. It's probably a gar. It's been on there for a while. We just thought it was a gar biting, so we didn't worry about it. An old gar might have finally hooked itself. It didn't really feel like a gar though, when not what I felt, but it's a little channel cat. Is it good? Or a little blue. Oh, a little flathead. That explains why he was swimming around everywhere. It, it's hard to tell the difference between a small flathead and a gar. They they kind of bite the same. Boy, he swallowed it too. I mean, he swallowed it bad. Don't pick him up by the hook. Grab him by the lip. We don't want to pull on his stomach. He won't bite you. Ah, he bit me. I said it was every fish in the whole river but a flathead. <laughs> We was both wrong. I was convinced it was a gar bite the whole time. We had a flathead on for the past 10 minutes, I guess. I'm gonna have to get some pliers. His mouth just ain't big enough to get down in there. Pretty little flathead. I tell you what, that would be the one to take home and eat right there, because no doubt flatheads are probably the best tasting catfish in my opinion, anyway. But I normally don't keep them. I like to, I like to go ahead and put them back and let them grow up. I just, I like them too much to kill them. So we're gonna turn this one loose and try to catch old channel cat to take home and eat. All right, put them back. Yeah, go ahead. I guess we'll sit here for a few more minutes. I was getting ready to leave because the gar has been wearing us out. They took all our baits and carried them out towards the middle of the river. But that one right there wasn't a gar, so we'll give it a few more minutes, see what happens. So we were headed to our next spot and we seen a school of moon eye right here feeding. And if you look out in front of us, you can probably see them coming up and picking the bugs off the top of the water. We've already caught a couple. We're gonna to try to get a couple more. I'm using just a little jig under a float and Landon's using live crickets under a float. Don't let him get off. Got him, get him down here in the bottom of the boat. If you've never caught a moon out before, they're pretty cool fish. They got a head and a mouth kind of like a trout. They got little teeth like a trout. They get quite a bit bigger than this. This is about, I don't know, probably, I've seen them probably twice this size actually. And then you got a gold eye, which is real similar to a moon eye, but uh, dorsal fins in a little bit different spot and they get quite a bit bigger than the moon eye. All right, so we've moved to a different spot. The last spot we were fishing was a mud bank with a bunch of wood on it. And this is a rocky bank, actually like a cliff with a bunch of wood and stuff on it. And there's actually a little rock pile behind us. So uh, we're gonna cut some fresh bait up and try it here for a little while. Is that fish? Yeah. It is. Here, hold that. Oh yes, yeah, it's not gonna be a channel cat. All right, so we've got another fish on here. I think this is gonna be another flathead. I, I didn't see the bite, so I'm not really sure. We were working on Landon's reel and uh, looked up and this rod was bent over, so I'm not sure what went on, but but it's just dead weight. It's not really fighting yet. There's them bubbles back there. Oh, they're way back there, ain't they? There he is. What is it? It's a blue, isn't it? It's a big old channel cat. Is it a big right. channel? It's not a flathead. It's a blue. We got our eater. If they don't come off. He took the head. That's all it seems to be working, really, is the heads. Got 
I tell you what, that fish is a little bit bigger than I like to keep to eat. We're never gonna get an eater. I'm too picky. Now, don't get me wrong, if I was hungry, if I needed something to eat, I'd keep every one of these fish, but I'm pretty uh, selective about the fish I take home and eat. I like them between one to five pounds normally, and I normally just keep blues and channels. But like I said, if I was hungry, I'd eat everything I caught. I don't know, he's just, he's probably about 10 pounds close to it. I'll tell you what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna keep him alive. If we don't catch anything else, I'm gonna keep him. If we catch him a couple smaller eaters, I'll put him back. We're gonna go with the old school stringer over the side of the boat and hope he don't break it. It's a lot, lot better on the fish to put it through that thin part of the mouth right there than it is through the gills. If you go through the gills and release him, he's probably not gonna make it even if he swims off. Now this is the first video that I filmed out of this little boat since I've added the GPS module to the trolling motor. And I gotta say, I love it. It makes such a big difference. I got it on my other boat and I've been spoiled by it. That's why I haven't used this boat a whole lot lately. But now that I got that, I'll be using this boat a lot more probably. We got a fish on. Huh? Not even kidding, yeah. Here, let me get him. Another one. All right, we got another one on the same. You still got him? Yeah, he's still Coming on at there. you? We got another one on the same rod. He was on there when I picked it up, but he's not now, is he? I don't, I don't think so. All right, y'all, so it's getting dark on us. I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day. We still got to get home and fillet our fish, and uh, we'll see you guys back at the house. Oh, our dang starter. I'll have to pull the rope. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I fillet a catfish. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is just the way I do it. I think it's pretty simple. Uh, now on the smaller catfish, say one to three pounds, I normally just start right up here around the dorsal fin and cut down towards the anal fin and just take all the fillet off that way because there's not really enough meat up here behind the head and then the head and stuff to mess with, in my opinion. On a fish this size, you know, he's probably about 10 pounds. There's gonna be a lot of meat up here in the head. We're gonna to wanna to get that too. So what I do is I split it up in two different sections. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make my first cut right at the end of the dorsal fin, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this part of the fillet off. That'll be all one piece. Go all the way down until you hit the backbone. And just turn your knife sideways. You'll need a pretty good sized knife to do this on these bigger fish. Just stay right against that backbone. Take your time, make sure your knife's good and sharp. That's the most important thing when you're filleting any fish. So there's that first piece. I normally just leave the skin on until I get ready to cook it. I'll clean all that up and get all the red meat and stuff off tomorrow night when we fry it up. Now that I got that section out of the way, I'm just gonna start right up here above the rib cage. Stay right against those bones and just start working all this around those ribs. Now you can do this all in one piece, but you know, more than likely you're gonna cut it up anyway when you cook it. And I seem to I seem to get a little more meat off of them this way. Just go up until you hit bone. And then there's the second part of the fillet right there. That's the big thick piece of meat. All we did is just cut around the ribs. And then we'll get this big chunk right here behind the head. That's a good piece of meat that stays right in there at behind the head so i'm sure you could scrape a little more meat off there if you wanted to but that's pretty clean for the most part that's the way i do it i'll show you real quick on this other side again so you're going to start right above the dorsal fin go straight down till you feel the feel the backbone just turn the knife sideways and stay real tight against that backbone you can put a lot of pressure on a fish this size you're not going to cut through the spine i just go ahead and cut it all the way off and then we just start working it up this way around those ribs. Oh, Wildcat smelled that fish. He came up in the barn here. He's wanting to buy. I'll give him some scraps. 
All right, another big thick chunk. And then we'll get that piece right there out of the head. All right, y'all, so there's a the finished product. You could probably scrape a little more meat off there, but that's pretty clean for the most part. What I didn't get, we'll let the cats work on that. So it's late, we're gonna get some sleep, but we're probably gonna fry this fish up tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see you guys then. All right, y'all, so we're getting ready to fry up some of our fish. I've got all the red meat and all the skin cut off of it. I kept just enough out for me and Landon to eat tonight, and then I froze the rest of it for later. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I don't know if you guys have tried this or not, but this Cajun two-step by Old Stale Cracker, this stuff is unbelievable. We've been putting it on chicken breast on the grill and it is it is something else. So if y'all haven't tried that, you gotta give it a shot. I think they got it at Walmart now for like $5. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in there and mix it up. We're not gonna go too heavy with it because the seasoning, the breading we're gonna use has got seasoning in it too. The most important part about cooking catfish or not just catfish, but a lot of fish is getting the red meat off of them. I guarantee you most people that say they don't like catfish, they probably had some catfish with the red meat on it because it is absolutely terrible in my opinion. You gotta get that red meat off. All right, so we got our seasoning mixed up and I got a bag of house Autry fish fry here. This is, a, there's I use this one and there's another brand I like too, but good stuff right here. Try not to open it and make it explode everywhere and waste it all. Oh, oh. like that. <laughs> it's in the pan and everything. What a mess. Hot, hot two shut, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to dump the whole bag in there. No point in trying to save any of it. All right, that's ready to go. All right, so we're cooking this outside tonight so we don't stink the house up for two or three days. I'm just going to use this little propane burner here. Try not to turn it over. Normally when I fry fish, I always deep fry it, but I'm gonna try it in a frying pan tonight with just a little bit of oil, and I'm gonna use some avocado oil. I've heard this stuff is really good for frying stuff because it's got a really high smoke point, and uh, avocado oil is actually really good for you, unlike most oil, so we're gonna try that out. I'm just gonna put probably about a half inch in the bottom of this pan. Now this oil, is uh, it doesn't have any taste. Like I said, it's got a really high smoke point. But the only problem is it is expensive. A bottle this size is about $10 at Walmart. Bring the temperature up to about 350, 375, and then we'll drop some fish in and see how it turns out. All right, oil's up to three, almost 400 degrees. So we need to cut the temperature way back. Or it's just gonna cool off whenever we drop the fish in there anyway. But. We'll fry it for uh, about three, four minutes. All right, so I believe the first round is done. If it tastes as good as it looks and smells, then we're in good shape. Got a good looking batter on it. All right, y'all, so there's the finished product. If it tastes half as good as it looks, I think we're gonna be all right. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's break it open, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's as good as it gets right there. I already know it's gonna be good. It is fantastic. Here, try that. That's real good. But I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think that's the best fish I've ever cooked in my life right there. That's the way I'm gonna be cooking catfish from now on. I'm gonna be shallow frying them in a fry pan like that with some avocado oil. For those of you all that are trying to eat healthier, that's the way to do it. That should be a pretty healthy way to cook fish right there. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. We're gonna go enjoy some of this fish. I hope you all enjoyed the video. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time.